This is the new CM3 throttle from Verpool, and while it does look very, very similar to the CM2, there is two small changes to it that I want to highlight today. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. So today's video is not going to be a full review and I just wanted to give you guys full disclaimer on what's going on here. First of all, yes, this unit was sent to me by Verpal and uh, something that I could keep, but it wasn't actually sent here for a review. You see, what this is, is actually a pre-production sample. This means this is not necessarily a finished product. It also means I will not be doing a full review of it today. We're just going to be looking at these new levers they have here on the back, which is the new feature that comes on the CM3 throttle. Now, this also means that while the functionality we're going to be looking at today is the same as we see on the finished version, the quality of what we see here may not be the same. And I'll point that out as we go along. But first, let's do a very quick rundown. Again, it's not going to be review, but I just want to quickly run over the switches. There are like two switches here in, next to the throttle itself. There's an analog lever, there's a mode dial. Here we have um, a digital um, rotating dial, continuous rotating with push. We have six um, buttons here that lights up. We have three momentary two-way switches down here towards the bottom, and we have another two switches out here on the side. Of course, we have the throttle itself that does split in two. We have a four-way hat with push, we have a single push button here, we have another four-way hat with push, a third four-way hat with push as well with a uh, analog, sorry, digital uh, rotating wheel around it. There's also a push button here underneath on the uh, lower side. Towards the back of the throttle we have an analog stick with push as well. Then we have another four-way hat with push, we have a digital slider with a small central notch. We have a two-way hat over here on uh, the left side of the throttle also with push, and there's another push button here. And on the opposite side of the throttle here, there is another um, a digital rotating uh, wheel, also with push. But this is all the same as we have on the uh, CM2 throttle. But what's new is, of course, these levers here that you can kind of pull up. You might be able to hear this, listen to this. They do creak quite a bit, and that's one of the points I wanted to make by this being a pre-production unit. This is one of the things that Verpal did send, uh, did send to Verpal when they asked me if I had any feedback on it before they sent it into uh, final production. What these levers does is, now in the middle between the two throttles, there's this track where two small um, like ball bearings are running on this track in here. And what you can do, what comes to the throttle, is all of these small pieces here and you can put these pieces in the track here and that's going to change the functionality of these levers. What they do right now, with this one I have on here, these small wheels is going to indent this small little, um, this small little like, track that is in this little uh, piece I put on. And that means when I reach that point, I have a small like notch. I can feel a small notch when I reach that point. So for a game like League Dangerous, for instance, I could put this here and I can manually adjust it. I could just take like, an Allen key and I can just lose the screw and I can adjust the position of this. So I could adjust this to fit exactly where I wanted to. Could be the 75% mark for optimal approaches. You can put that there yeah, so you can feel that 75% mark on the throttle if that's what you want to. But as you can see here, there's a whole host of other different things and we're going to run over these different ones. Okay, so I'm just going to unscrew this one here like so. The screw comes loose and you can take this whole piece off like so. We're going to be very careful not to lose the screw because we're going to need that in a second. Now, the piece I have here is the one with a little notch in that you can put. And there's small arrows on it to indicate which way these rollers, these small ball bearings should hit it. And as you say, you can actually put one both here at the top and the bottom. So you could have two of these pieces fitted at the same time, one at the top, one at the bottom. This one is the one that I've just had on, which was the little like uh, knot that the small uh, ball bearings fall into. So you can use that to give an indication of a certain uh, position. This also comes in a center variant. If you want the, uh, the notch towards the center, you can take this, you can put that in there like so. And now when this rolls over, I will then have a, a, a notch right at the center. This is a little bit more pronounced. It more falls into, uh, into place um, if that's what you want. But you can have a center notch there as well. Now, I think it could be fun to try, let's say, this one, for instance, because so far the levers here might not make a whole lot of sense to you. So I'm just going to take this here and I'm going to just screw this one on. Now with this one on, you can see the throttle kind of stops before it actually reach 100%. This one is, I don't know, maybe 60, 70% right now, depending on, you can adjust the position of these so that this can be 
like more tailored towards where you want it to be. Again, these can it can be moved up and down to fit your exact needs. But it's going to hit a hard stop here, and I can't move the throttle any further right now unless I pull up these levers and I pull it over this edge here, and now the throttle can continue all the way to its fully forward position. So just to show you this again, now it's at zero, it hits a hard stop, I lift the levers over the edge, and now I can continue. And then you have things like these, where it's like a full little arm that comes up, and that means, of course, you have to lift over in both uh, directions. So in this case, it would go up, it would hit a, a hard stop, I lift over these little um, like peaks coming up, and I could then go up to the extended area here on top, and then the same way when I come back, I'm going to hit that hard edge there, and I have to lift up these uh, the wheels to get over the, uh, the edges here as well. And this, of course, also comes in various the fifth in the lower end, where you have the same functionality. So for something like Elite Dangerous, I think having this little notch there at the 75% mark is probably the most useful ones. But I could definitely see in situations with like flight sims that it could be nice to have one of these here at the bottom. For instance, if you don't want to go to zero throttle, if that's going to basically cut all power to your engine, all fuel to your engine, and thereby stop the engine completely, you might want to have a small stop there so that you don't in flight accidentally pull all the way to zero and thereby shut off the engine. Now, there are a few other things I just want to mention, of course. It is that you can loosen up so you can adjust the position or the angle of these, um, these little uh, arms here. So right now, I've loosened this one up so you can see this is very loose right now. Um, just a little screw here on the side you can adjust that with. Right now, these are, of course, separate and they will always be separate with what comes with the, uh, with the throttle. But since you can lock the throttle together, and I have to lift up both of them, because if I have this ledge here, it's not enough that I lift up one. You can see then the other one kind of gets stuck on it. I have to lift up both. That means I'm ha I have to allocate two fingers to, to lift over here. So I would love to see this come in a one piece that I could replace. Instead of having two separate ones, I could replace this with a single piece. It's a small thing, um, but I think it would just add a little bit extra to make it feel a little bit more complete when you have the throttle in this locked position. Um, of course, they are split so that if I do take the throttle here and I split it in two, now this can, of course, be... Oh, I need to lock that in. There we go. <laughs> now, of course, you can run these separately if you want to do it like one per engine or something like that. So I think this is a really cool feature. I could definitely see this being used for space sims. Maybe it's not the most useful feature, but for flight sims, I can see this being very, very useful. But I'd love to hear your guys' opinion about this feature in the comment section. Is there anything you would change, anything you would improve? Then put that down there and who knows, maybe Verbal's going to read it. But thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like, subscribe, and until next time, I will see you guys in space.